of Gilmore, possibilities with the Cowboys, and a bizarre twist, according to sources from the NFL, is that he was traded to the Panthers. Come on, I can't make this stuff up. Come on, it's crazy. Give me a few seconds here while I set this up. This is crazy. Yo. Like everybody got money but the Cowboys sometimes, right? Everybody be pulling the trigger but us. It's crazy. Now, keep in mind, we good with what we got. We good with what we got. We are. But it's bizarre. It's just so trade bizarre. You know, to me. To me. Yeah. Still building the plane while it's in there. Appreciate everybody for jumping in, tuning in. Yeah, come on. <laughs> All right, Cowboy Nation. That news is so bizarre. I, look, woke up early in the morning, got my work out the way, and, you know, the news was just hitting the airwaves. Like, of course, people were still hyped off of the possibilities of what we're going to do with the replacement of Jalen. And, of course, some people are still mad and angry and upset or what have you. And then all of a sudden, you know, the the, the Patriots submitted news that now all of a sudden they got rid of Stephon Gilmore. That is the craziest news of all because technically they didn't release him. Technically what happened they traded him, but somehow somebody sprinkled the wrong news and said that they released him or was too early or what have you, and he was traded. Or this could be a situation whereas, or it could be a situation whereas, um, it could be just this right here. They found out somebody else was going to get him, and they said, no, we got to have the balance of power. <laughs> We we don't want to we don't want to see the Carolina Panthers go all the way down with the ship, and they've been busy. They've been busy. The Carolina Panthers been busy. How long? How well? Didn't they just made a trade for C.J. Henderson? And then all of a sudden they realize ah, let me make another trade for Stephon Gilmore. Come on, who does that? Who like like how is that even possible? You know, so they finna release C.J. Henderson, or they gonna keep him? Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Now, the Cowboys, we okay. We all right. We in good shape. It's just that we wanted to see if we can get somebody that can solidify their role. And on my, on my video, for those on my Facebook page, I'm not even going to upload it on my Facebook page because it was heavy, heavy on Stephon Gilmore and the possibilities of him playing for the Dallas Cowboys and what he would do interchangeable to this particular system. Yeah, so um, so who's getting the A.J. Abouye, huh? Is, did they release him? I mean, they rearranging the furniture, right? <laughs> On the Titanic, they still going down, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cowboy Nation, how do you guys feel about that? I'm only quick with it because I was about to upload my Stephon Gilmore video to the Facebook page and the Instagram. I'm glad I didn't because people are going to be like, look, man, you got you got to be quicker than that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This need to be my day job. It just really do. Um, 
Jay, what's good? No law, think. This means Jay Seahorn is out for the year. Yeah, yeah, he's out. He had a broken foot. I wouldn't want as a DB to come back with that one, you know. And I don't think it was similar to what uh, our guy Trayvon Diggs went through last season. I think it's a different type of uh, injury. Uh, let the young bulls play. Jalen can't cover uh, cover for us. Uh, this is from Chris Black. Yeah, um, it's crazy altogether, Cowboy Nation. All I can think of is that this team. We we got to figure this out as it relates to. Bear with me one second. One second. Let me do this right quick. You know, um, just bizarre altogether, man. Good grave. Let me see if I can go to. Let me see if I go here, right here. Let's go to Twitter. I mean, good grave, just bizarre. Yeah. Um, shout out to my guy Skywalker. Still, see, sources, source. The Panthers traded for Stephon Gilmore. He put it up so quick. Normally, you have a a beautiful picture on the bottom of it. But this literally happened. Like, I'm sitting like, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Because just before that, just before that, um, it was reported that Gilmore wanted to go to the Packers, according to Albert Breer. Breer, I think that's how you said it. Breer, yeah, Albert Breer. You know, so even he didn't even know. You know, so when they asked him, like, hey, Gilmore, where you want to go? I want to go to the Packers. Okay, we finna put the paperwork in and see if we can get on the phone with the Packers since you released. He's a free agent. But I never in my life knew that you could be released and then traded. I, I don't know how that worked unless somebody was lying to kick it. Uh, it looks to deal with pay him $15 million a year, according to Josina Anderson. Shout out to Josina Anderson. Um, uh, Buccaneers, Packers are the two teams that reportedly looked to signing Gilmore. Teams with the most cap space, the Jags, the Panthers, the Eagles, the Bron- Broncos, the what F team, you know, uh, Bengals, Chargers, Seattle, Steelers, and Browns. They are, are all of the teams with the most cap space at the time. And, of course, we, we don't have a lot of money over here. We we po over here, Cowboy Days. We po. <laughs> we are po. We don't got no money. We don't got no coins. Yeah. <clears throat> can J- can Jalen still be traded? I-, I guess so. I guess so. Look, the news with even Jalen, uh, I said in the video, uh, for those who didn't get a chance to watch the video, I said in the video with Jalen, uh, allegedly, and I'm not saying that this is what, what, what happened, allegedly um, they, they wanted him to renegotiate his uh, his contract as far as the, um, the guaranteed money on the injury side. And he like, no, Mm-mm, y'all trying to hose me, no. So that was the reason why Jalen was like, nah, I'm not going to do that one. Um, <clears throat> Jalen can be traded to 4 p.m. Eastern today. This is from Steven Nelson. Appreciate you. So, yeah, so somebody can so somebody can leapfrog into that. Oh, that makes sense now. The rulings. Okay, now I get it. I see what you're saying. So everything wasn't official. It's just like, okay, we finna release this guy. You guys got into 4 o'clock p.m. uh before the close of business day to put your offers in the hat if not we'll go into orders i think uh veteran players they get a chance i think you've played three years or more i think that ruling still exists that you get a chance whereas you don't have to go through waivers right you don't have to go through waivers but when you're not a veteran you got to go through waivers and i think that that is the draft order if i'm correct you got to go through the draft order. So, hey, it's crazy. I said, instead of me trying to upload a video and then let that render and let that process out, it's quicker for me to just jump live and talk to you guys on my break. Man, because this is really crazy. I wasn't expecting this to happen. Gilmore from Carolina, he's not asking for a release. Laugh out loud. Uh, TJ, yeah, I didn't Stephon Gilmore, he he played for the South Carolina Gamecocks. So, you know, and and I get it, you know. Gilmore, they was comparing Gilmore to J.C. Horn to Gilmore, what have you. And I get that one, too. 
D Law is overpaid and always hurt. This is from Duke. Uh, roundtable will be off the hook tonight. Yeah, Duke 22. Shout out to you. We will be doing the roundtable. Uh, it will be a Koye, Foots the King, Vots Lombardi, and I believe Sky. I think Sky is going to be on the roundtable tonight as well. Uh, I'm going to leave it out anybody. Yeah, that's all of the people there. Uh, so uh, we, we're going to talk about the future of this Dallas Cowboys team and the future of where we're trying to go with as far as the defensive side of the coin. And I know my title and says uh, Carolina Panthers, but, you know, this is a Cowboys-centric channel. So if you are a Carolina Panthers fan, shout out to you guys, which, which I want a cookie. I'm not going to put up the dead <laughs> the dead Panther, what happened to, to you guys. But if anybody, if anybody's upset and angry of this news, it should be the Eagles fans, right? Don't they play the Carolina Panthers this week or what have you? And I'm not sitting here saying that uh, uh, Gilmore will be ready to play right off the jump because I think he's still got to pick up the playbook, learn some things, or what have you. But it is what it is. Uh, shout out to y'all, though, man. Shout out to y'all, though. Let me see if I can do this real quick while I build the plane while it's in there. Thank you, everybody, for jumping in. So where to do with the Dallas Cowboys right now? Where to place the Dallas Cowboys now as it relates to – uh, the replacement of Jalen Smith. What we going to do? Why would you eat the $7.2 million? Well, you're going to pay him one way or another. Will this mess up the psyche of the Dallas Cowboys? Will this mess up everything as far as a, a mojo moment? Where Where is that is what Mike McCarthy was talking about, right? Mojo, these sorts of things. Will this mess that up? <laughs> I don't think so. I look at it like these players, they understand. They know what's going on. They have a notion that in my video, if you guys, this is my point. This was my point in my video earlier. These guys are young. And a lot of times when you have a coaching staff, a new coaching staff, they like their guys. And I know that that saying, we like our guys, from John Stephen Jones is a negative connotation, but hear me out. Don't crucify me. But from a Dan Quinn perspective, he have no love affair of no lost feelings or hard feelings for Jalen. Old folks were right. Old folks said, hey, it's easier to bend the tree while it's young. You can shift it. And make it grow a certain way that you want it to grow. Well, Keanu Neal, he's old, but he's been bent already to Dan Quinn's philosophy. Excuse me, what about Keanu? Uh, what, what about DeMonte KZ? He's already been bent the way Dan Quinn wanted. Well, Malik Hooker was never, well, excuse me, some parts are el eligible to fit. And in this system, the Cowboys organization, we might be looking at it from the outside, looking in for those Jalen Smith warriors, those out there who rooting for Jalen Smith, who don't see any fault in Jalen Smith. You may be pointing out all of the film. You may point out everything that happened on the play from your recollections, right? Right. You might be looking at it saying, no, no, no. He, 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 he's led the team in tackles. Hey, he was on the play. He made impactful plays. But we are not in those meetings. John Durden said the Patriots released Gilmore. No, 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 no. Corrections, corrections. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. So, uh, uh, oh, my God. Sources. The source. <laughs> the Panthers traded for Gilmore. But back to the, back to the conversation here. here. Here's what happened, Cowboy Nation. We are not in those meetings. Let me repeat, we are not in those meetings. And when coach go to the board and say, hey, why you didn't shoot through this A-gap right here? Hmm? Why you didn't shoot through that gap? Oh, because uh, he said, what did I tell you? You see? <laughs> that goes a long way. And coach walk out of the room. 
And then all of a sudden, players say, hey, I can't believe Coach said it like this. These players talk back to each other. And these players might win it back to Dan Quinn. Hey, man, old boy don't believe in your philosophy. He don't believe in your system. So that could have been the situation. It goes a long way in that locker room. But these young fish, these young bulls, they bendable. They don't break. One of the players that spoke out last year was Jalen Smith. Now, that was Mike Nolan's system. He said it was too complicated. It was too hard. Elevation is what the coach is supposed to do. That's just how it goes. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, Give me cash. Keep an eye on defensive tackle Grady Jarrett from ATL. Quinn drafted him. The trade rumors are swirling. I mean, I love these trade rumors, man. Got to get it done before it's all said and done, though. Uh, Jalen Smith is out there high-fiving cheerleaders, uh, cheerleading uh, when he plays, goes in his way, instincts goes the opposite. He really couldn't run or cover in, K- in Quinn's system. This is from Jay. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, shout out to you, Kevin. But I get it. And I just got to play. I got to play this right quick. I got to play this one right quick. For all, and not some, but for all of the Cowboy fans, that's hoping and wishing for us to fall on our face because they got because of the Cowboys organization made a business decision. Shame. 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 We got to stop this Cowboy Nation. We got to. Players are not meant to stay forever on their said team that they got drafted on or they got picked up on, they are not meant to stay forever. Two to three years, the maximum time that players normally stay on teams are three to four years, collectively speaking. So stop falling in love with players. I know that that's the new school of football, right, to fall in love with the player. Well, well, I know that's the old field, but the new school is really, hey, teams that's really – progressing they get them in and they get them out but stop falling and i know players 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 sometimes feel like family they feel like relatives you fall into the graces of saying okay this guy but players this is business this is business this is not a love relationship the moment you look at that person as your friend Come on now. That's the moment that you really don't really get the true evaluations of it. So stop it. There's no, hey, the Cowboys did him wrong. There's no such thing of having $7.2 million sitting at the house eating your oodles and noodles. There's nothing wrong with sitting at your house and waiting for the phone call to ring. Let me know if anybody in this chat box is getting paid $7.2 million to sit at your house. Write this down. Everyone have a reason. But results are what matter. Write that down. Put it in your mirror. Tell it to your employees. Tell it to everybody. Everyone have a reason. But results are what matter. This is a prime example of the world. Let the AI speak. No, 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 no. We'll be just fine. Facts. Appreciate you for the donation there. Yeah, go. <laughs> That's a cold-blooded name. It's business. It's business. I cried like a baby when I saw Michael Irvin laid out on the, on, on the turf against the Eagles. But it's business. It's business. 
he made his millions. Money that you probably can close your eyes and can't count it all, right? He had his career. But it was time for the Cowboys to start looking for another prospect. You know? That's just how it go, Cowboy Nation. We we want the good things to happen to him, but we got to understand the core philosophy, stick and move. Jalen Jalen Smith will be all right. You don't have to pay any of his bills. And you don't have to turn your back on a team for making a business decision. Now, are all business decisions right? No. But it's one thing to say, yeah, I'm mad at the decision. But it's another thing to start hating the team that you're supposed to root for and then say, well, I'm going to be a fan of the other team that he goes to. See, that's what that's what made fantasy football so popular now. Nobody's real. There's no real loyalties no more. You know, I, I tried to play. I played fantasy football one time last season. Shout out to my guy, Vodge Lombardi. He set it up. But I feel, I feel, you know, you know what Tupac said? You made a G today, but you made it in the sleazy way. You know what I'm saying? I felt bad start looking for other teams and rooting for them. You know, I said, God, dog, I'm old school. You know, I said, no, 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 no. Uh, hey, I pretty, pretty much I beat everybody down when I had half of my team was the Cowboys on my fantasy league. True story, by the way. I was winning left and right. But everybody I drafted, I said, good grief. They start falling down like flies. I said, look, I ain't playing fantasy football no more. No. I said, I jinxed that thing. <laughs> but I can't be rooting and shooting for other teams and stuff like that. And, and, and I'm not selling or denigrating people who play fantasy football. I think that that's a wonderful thing. But don't lose your loyalty. Don't, don't be hating against your own player. Oh, Gallup. Why did he catch this touchdown? Why did he drop this ball? Uh, Will Harris says, newsflash, Lee, Law, Sean Lee, Tony R., Jason Witten played years and was trash. This is from Will Harris. According to what? According to your core philosophy? That Sean Lee is trash. Would you go to Sean Lee? I met the guy, wonderful guy. Would you walk up to Sean Lee and say, hey, dog, you trash? And don't lie to kick it, Will. See, that's the thing. Fans are so quick. Say, you trash. I wonder if Sean Lee go to your job. You know, when you're flipping your burgers or you're working in line at Walmart and say, hey, you missed this item. You trash. Think, elevate yourself, Will Harris. Don't fall for that. Because when they approach Sean Lee, I'm quite sure. They say, hey, would you be willing to make this change of your salary to stay for this team? He probably said, yes, sir. And I'm not saying that just because he said, yes, sir, that he's better than the other player that said, no. People must understand and know their own value. But he probably looked at that situation and said, you know what? I'm willing to renegotiate my salary. If they if he'd have said nah hell no, nah. then Jerry could have told him, hey, won't you lean forward a little bit? <laughs> Jerry could have told him, you know, won't you lean forward? Yeah. But people got to understand, stop it, and that's news flash right there. Will Kevin Joseph is practicing. Yeah, Lee wasn't trash, just couldn't stay healthy. This from Ted's. Facts. But if the Cowboys were to move on from Sean Lee based upon or predicated upon his health concerns, you don't see law moving furniture around. Ah, nah, nah. Look at the potentials. It's been a business move. This is business. You don't have to sell or denigrate a person when you are a boss or a leader or management when they show up late. I think that there's some rules and policies that's put in place, Cowboy Nation. 
across the board. You can set up some occurrences. You can set up rules, three strike rule, whatever. That's how you do that. You don't have to call your employee. Ah, you trash. You suck. You know, you don't have to do that. The thing is, the problem is with the Dallas Cowboys, collectively speaking, they do hold on to players just to speak objectively. They do hold on players for so long that they don't get nothing in return. Right? It's just how that goes right here. That's how it is. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Law Nation. Be sure to hit that like, share content. It's always a marvelous thing to do there. Sharing is caring. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Shay Sharp, man, he be speaking some of the truth, man. And they let you go. They let, they let everybody know. The person that write the checks, they in control. Coaches supposed to just coach the players that's on the field. The evaluations of the players and everything goes from the general manager. They got final say so. What Jerry Jones said from the socks to the jocks to everything else, I make the decisions, not the coach. Now, it's up to him to be in liberty of spreading that information over to the coaching staff. But it come here to show you, though, that in this house where I live, I make the decisions, not my kids. It's cold-blooded. What room? When I say it's time to go to bed, turn the light off, that's final. There's no more. But I want to keep the light on. There's no way that I want to tell. There's no way that, that they can counter and say, well, I refuse to sleep in this room. No. That's Jerry Jones' angle. I make the final say. That's just how it is, unfortunately, fortunately. And I told people earlier to write this down. Everyone have a reason, but results are what matter. Look, just, just to elaborate a little bit more, the same person that released him had a different intention just a year ago. Yep. What was it, Law? He said, Jalen is the cornerstone of this defense. Let me know where I'm lying at. Oh, wait. You see, cornerstones are important. Cornerstones, the stone that was rejected, cast out, becomes the pillar or the most important stone of the entire foundation. So when people utilize the word cornerstone that goes a long way if they know the true meaning of what a cornerstone really is the stone that was rejected the stone that was overlooked become the centerpiece the main frame the foundation and Jerry Wayne Jones I believe he's a brilliant guy intelligent guy being there not by chance not by luck. You know what he's doing? I come here to tell you guys that happened in 2018. What year it is right now? That's happened before the pandemic. People walking around with no mask. Like, that happened so long ago. If you walk around with a mask on, they probably thought you were robbing the play. They probably thought you were crazy. They would hand out crazy checks to you. All right. If you're talking about using all up the uh, sanitizer and everything, they look at you like you're crazy. Hey, boy, what you doing? It's the year 2021. It's time for these young guys to step up and be into the situation. That was the old regime. That's what I'm saying. Cowboy Nation. Sometimes you will look into a player situation and say, hey. It's, he, he gone, dog. It's over with. Bama fans say it's 2021. It's, excuse me. Yeah, it's 2021. Appreciate you said. Thank you for sharing. Sharing is caring. We can't put toothpaste back into the tube. We can't. Like I can bang on this table just like this. And tell everybody. And I can tell the world. Tell the world. 
that if the Dallas Cowboys would have made these type of situations, these type of moves, and keep Bill Parcells, the amount of times they kept Jason Garrett, we'd at least had us a Super Bowl appearance at least. I, I can book that one. I, I, can, I, I, I can at least say we would at least been to the Super Bowl. And if they never got rid of Jimmy Johnson and, 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 and Jerry Jones, what have you, never got into that argument. I, I remember I remember a movie a long, long time ago called The Butterfly Effect, right? And you change one little thing in history and it just re, reshaped the whole entire world, right? Let's say that Jimmy Johnson, he was at the bar. And I believe he was talking to his other football contemporaries. And Jerry somehow pulled up at the bar and he wanted that shout out. He wanted that toast. He wanted to, hey, tell everybody, hey, congratulate me too. I, I helped this team win the Super Bowl. But Jimmy Johnson would refuse to salute him, right? He refused to give him praises on that day. But let's say. That all of a sudden, Jerry Wayne Jones had a flat that day and he couldn't go to that bar. Man, who knows what would have happened, right? <laughs> it's so hard to change the past. Play no more, man. It's, dang, this clip long as hell will get out. But but I'm going to tell you guys this since I'm pressed for time. Um, normally, normally, and, and, and I'm and I'm trying to when I'm, when I'm pausing like this, I'm trying to keep it everything PG thirteen. I'm just trying to keep it thirteen. Normally, moves like this, yes, it do comes after a loss, but sometimes after a win, after a win, it uncovers those who really support the team. It uncovers those who really bought in and sold into the situation. It's hard, Cowboy Nation. For me to explain this for people who never played sports or never played in type into a, a situation whereas everybody's happy. But it's hard, just like they said in the beginning. Jalen Smith, he was the captain of the team. He was the guy that made all of the authoritative decisions last season as it relates to alignment and assignment. Shout out to my guy, Scott Walker, still uh, last year. He was saying that, hey, Jalen is just not that green dot guy, meaning putting the information on the helmet to let everybody know where to align and assign. One thing that I can tell you guys, and you don't have to look at majority of the film, but just pull up a few clips. When Michael Parson is at that mic position, and he's pointing out guys, hey, squeeze to this side, LVE. I want you to shoot down in this particular spot on the edge. Goes a long way. And I'm not selling or denigrating Jalen Smith, Alkerman, you know, as far as his knowledge or what have you, a, study, a student of the game and these sorts of things. But what I'm saying, collectively speaking, you learn more about a player on how they ingratiate themselves within the confines of their locker room and, in, and within the celebratory as it relates to the film study and the revision of what happened during that game or during the games that, that were played. It could be that he was sour grapes. That's all I'm saying. And it could be none of this. It could be the fact that, hey, he didn't willing to renegotiate his uh, uh, guaranteed money on the injury settlement, and Jerry Wayne said, hey, it's time for you to go. It's best, best for us to move on so that the other leaders can arrive. We've seen this story before. They got rid of T.O. to make it comfortable for T Tony Romo, right? Let me know if I'm lying. They got rid of Roy Williams, and he was <laughs> – he, he was a guy that really didn't make any plays like that, you know. But they got rid of Roy Williams to make Desmond Bryant happy, right? Remember that? Y'all be forgetting. What we gave. Look, can somebody put in the chat what we gave up for Roy? Put in the chat what we gave up for Roy Williams. What we gave up for him. And where did we draft the Dez? That's overkill in that department, by the way. What we gave up for Roy? 
the, the Burks hit Jalen with balls as they was a landing. Yeah. Donald says, appreciate you so much uh, for this, uh, Leon. Appreciate you. <laughs> Donald says, yeah, <laughs> first, yeah. At Mystic, I think, yeah, it was more than the first. Yeah, Mystic said two first. And then we turned around and drafted a guy that was in the first round. Dez Bryant. But to make him comfortable, we got rid of him, right? <laughs> yeah, Rob. Lee, Lee, Lee McLean says we got rid of uh, Dez for Dak. It's argumentative. <laughs> I'm going to knock on that. It's argumentative. Yeah. But it was clear discourse between Roy and Dez. Roy was like, hey, Rook. Yeah, you, Rook. Come here. Get over here. Hold my shoulder pads and my helmet. Dad's like, nah, dog, not today, homie. Who you talking to? Shoot. Not your boy. <laughs> World was terrible in Dallas. This is the cowboy pay. <laughs> yeah. But it goes to show you that these are the things that happen. You go on and on and on and on. Right. What 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 was that? What was the uh, it was Dwayne Harris had to make choice. Dwayne Harris or Cole Beasley. These are the choices that the Cowboys had to make. Couldn't keep both of them. How did that turn out? Cole Beasley still playing right now. Dwayne 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 came back with Avengers on one of those games. I think it was a 2015. Dwayne ran it all the way back. Scored a touchdown on us on the kickoff return, or something like that. So this is nothing new under the sun. In order for Micah to elevate, they probably said, hey. Kumbaya. And they did it the inverse. Martellus Bennett. They got rid of him to keep it comfortable and comfy. Cushion, cushion. For Jason Witten. Right? See, it ain't nothing new under the sun. Y'all be thinking, y'all be thinking, law man, he making stuff up, man. No. <laughs> I ain't making this stuff. I can't make this stuff up. Yep, so it's just how it goes. Uh all together, collectively speaking, Cowboy Nation. Let me see what they got over here. What Mike Irvin say. Morning, Michael. Your reaction to the Jalen Smith news last night. I was absolutely surprised and shocked. Now it's so interesting because when I got home, you know, we shot inside the NFL, and I flew back home yesterday evening. And when I got home, I I, I, I pulled I had Trayvon Diggs on the podcast. Oh wow! When we got the news, whoa! When we got you know, and I got it. <laughs> My producer types it on the screen. I said, whoa. Whoa, and I'm gonna tell you something, man. You know, he he went silent. He went dead silent. He was like, "Are you, you like?" You know, I felt funny even asking him in that kind of a situation when it was dropped on us like that. You know, yeah. because I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was shocked, and he was like, "Man, man, Jalen, that was that was one of the guys that took me in and everything, and what Jalen meant to him and everything, and and how difficult that is, and." You know, because guys in the locker room, they they love Jalen, and they, they 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 thought he was a great dude. I'm holding that card. When you started playing that, I grabbed the card because I still have this card. Oh, wow. I'm not giving up on Jalen. I'm gonna still hold on to this card, and hopefully, somehow, some way, he can turn it around. If not here, maybe somewhere. Mike about to cry over there. Y'all hear Mike? Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Mike about to cry over here, man. He said, I'm going to order you all are the only participant in the conference. He holding on to that card. He holding on to that card. All on. participants are muted. Here we go. Here we go. So, you know, play aside, you know, like you mentioned that, you know, the guys like it. What does this do to the locker room when a player of his caliber from a player uh, or, or a player, a leader like him is, is removed from the locker room? 
Man, I, you know, I, I don't know that. I was, I was trying to think who, who who was let go at some point in my career that I could say is tantamount to this. That that equals something like Jalen, you know, great guy in the locker room where everybody loves. Um, you know, high drive pick that you knew or thought that certainly they want to give all the time to develop into. You know, so I so I don't know that I've had anybody. Don't cry, Mike. That, um, like boy, that. Boy, to tell you the truth that. That, that Jimmy or somebody that Jimmy let go or anybody. So, so you know, it, it's hard to make a comparison to that. Michael, why didn't this work out on the field, in your opinion? It's about football now, ultimately. It's a great story, and it really is, man. And it's such an inspiring story. And, 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 and having guys like Jalen on your team that have overcome things, I, I think that's very important. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's just... It just didn't work out. I I I, I hope. Here, here's what I've always hold, held a hope on. I just hope that somehow, some way, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if he needs to get strong, stronger or strengthen him, maybe, I, I I don't know. I, I know he has such physical skill set, a great ability. But of course, you know, coming back from that injury and then sustaining a certain type of play, I, I guess it was just difficult coming off that injury. Now. I think that what Irvin is is really lamenting and emotional about is the storyline. It's the storyline of Jalen. That's what I really believe that that is what's going on here. The storyline and and understanding that, hey, this guy had a a, a terrific, man, like a horrible, a, a crazy injury, terrible injury to occur. And for him to get back to football was amazing. Like, this is modern-day miracle stuff that, that occurred. On top of that, if you sprinkle in what happened to Irving when he first got into the NFL, a lot of people thought that he was going to not make it and play a long, beautiful career in the NFL. But Irving was not limited, in a sense, when he got back from his injury. Jalen, you can clearly see it. Coming out of college, before the injury, I'm going to tell you guys right now, and this is not me all hanging in, pom-pom, and cheerleading for Jalen. Who was a better prospect, Jalen Smith or Michael Parson? Who had a better impact for their collegiate careers? One can argue and say, man, Jalen. But look what happened in the meaningless game. Look what happened. I can pull up the stats side by side. Jalen was just phenomenal. The way he can carry a tight end down the field. Athletic enough to get around to that edge. Bend and get to the quarterback. Dip that shoulder. Sack. Sideline to sideline. Go back. And look up Jalen Smith. I'm not talking about Jalen post-injury. I'm talking about Jalen pre-injury. Monster. He was going to go, believe it or not, I think that he was going to go fifth overall, sixth overall. All right, let's cheer you up a little bit. All right, You're Michael. So down, Michael. Or we're three and one. Yeah, I, I, I'm hurt, man. Oh I'm hurt my God, here. Mike hurt. Man, man. That, that was. I was I really I wanted that to work out. I wanted him to kind of turn the corner and then show everybody. I know he worked hard. Just be, when you hear that kind of noise that he's been hearing, and he's been hearing it for a while, it, it pushes you to work hard. I'm just I'm, well, I guess what I'm hoping is that that is something that he can control. Like he can fix. He can work hard and get better. The leg. He can still work hard and get better. Get stronger and get back on the field somewhere and play the way. We saw him play a couple of years ago. Man. Today, good morning. Yeah, that, that was uh, the interview uh, for. Uh, let me do this right quick. Bear with me, so that uh, I want I want you guys to have this interview. I want you. Guys Trayvon to wins it. NFC Defensive Player of the Month. Uh, okay. At well, what point do you try to start game planning with teams to go away from on, him, man. or in the NFL, does it take? 
much longer than this for other teams to believe that, hey, this is a guy, he's arrived, we should start staying away from him. How, how do you look at that in terms of teams game planning for Trayvon based upon, you know, whether they think he's... I don't know what happened to my audio on that one. Hold on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so that link that's in the description box, man, uh, you guys can click that, and that way you can listen to the full interview without me pausing and rewinding. Uh, my thing is, Cowboy Nation, yeah, Michael Irvin is hurt. Yeah, uh, we understand it. I think that he's more hurt. He's more hurt for, like, the storyline than, than what he actually sees out there on the field, right? I mean, it's emotional. That's why I say, man, you, you could be – like, I'm not – telling cowboy fans not to be fans of the players but you got to understand that at the end of the day the players gonna go it's cowboys over players you know that's just how it is it's not players over cowboys now you can have a heart i'm not sitting here saying that you shouldn't have a heart you know you shouldn't uh look at other teams at all but it's still cowboys over players that's just unfortunately everybody that was on this team I was rooting for this team before they was even on this team, right? Everybody, every single player that's on this team, I was, I've been rooting for this team before they was even thought about putting on silver and blue. And that should be everybody that's watching right now. It's, it's crass. I get it. But that is the reason why these boys get paid millions and millions of dollars. That is the reason why even without a college degree, once they finish playing the sport, they can go right into broadcasting. And because of their likeness and because of their relevancy as it relates to they played in the league, they can trump the person that went four to five years who got their degree or what have you in broadcasting and journalism, and they can get the job just like that. Oh, it's not fair. They already made millions of dollars. But that's life. People want life to be this fair thing that everybody lives to be 100 years of age and nobody gets sick, nobody cough or what have you. That's what this world is trying to become, right? Everybody's okay. Everybody's pretty. Everybody, grade yourself from 1 to 10, everybody's a 10. But I come here to tell you there are going to be some booger ugly sugars up in here, baby. There are going to be somebody with a cross eye, a snag, a tooth, right? There are going to be somebody that make $100,000 a year. There are going to be millionaires. There are going to be somebody who make Ten dollars an hour. That's just how it is. That's life. Not everybody's going to be given a silver spoon. But this world will tell you, yeah, you're going to get that. But no, you got to work hard and grind and get it. You got to figure that thing out. And when you start making a little money, hey, you start looking a little better, right? <laughs> The yin yang twins getting all type of ladies. Three, six, nine. Everybody get low, get low. Have you ever seen them? <laughs> Look at little Boosie, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't know what I'd have been through. But that's just how life is. That's just life. <laughs> Sheila, appreciate you. Oh, oh, Sheila. It is what it is, Cowboy Nation. Let me see. It was an audio. Oh, yeah, let me listen to this one right quick, and then we can. Boy, fit would be what? I think that's a problematic. I mean, look, the Cowboys are a cover three. You know, they're playing more man than. Yeah, hold on. I, I don't know where that audio went to. It was a good one, though. Oh, my goodness. How are they talking about it? And they went away from it. Appreciate you, Keith. Appreciate you, Keith Floyd. All right, well, this is what we do. We will, um, it's 121. I got about 20 more minutes just for y'all, just for y'all. And we're going to do it this way. Here we go. 657-390-7391 is the contact hotline for your mind. If you have any conversations or, or thoughts, Let's get it going. We're going to run this one for about 20 minutes. So we're going to run for the 20 minutes from here. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you heard today, be sure to hit that subscribe button, share this content, let a friend, neighbor, foe know where to go. All right, so we're going to run this thing. When 20 minutes is up, we're going to get up out of here. All right, so uh, Cowboy Nation, shout out to you, Keith Floyd. What makes this hard, because I don't know where my AI is at, <laughs> uh, the Cowboys have other dead weight that have 
contribute less. Great business decision. Yep. What make this hard is the Cowboys have other dead weight that have contributed less. Great business decision. My my only counter to that, Keith, would be this right here. You have the right to start making your adjustments now. And the dead weight aspect of it, it could be that the philosophy from Dan Quinn may not coincide with what Jalen Smith was doing. That's all I can say from here, from the outside looking in. Uh, 918, you're live. Hey, thank you, Law. Appreciate you taking my phone call. Mm-hmm. I just want to add something real quick. You know, the thing that everybody needs to understand is everybody in that building at uh, Dallas Cowboys, they love Jalen Smith. That dude is one hell of a man outside of football, okay? Mm-hmm. And so it hurt a lot of people to for him for them to have to cut him in the first place. I know that. Mm-hmm. The next thing is – Thinking back to Tony Romo, for example, I hated it when Tony Romo left. He's one of the best quarterbacks Cowboys ever had, brother. Mm-hmm. And and it's sad. I, th- I wish he could have got a Super Bowl ring before he left. But you know what? He had to go. It was his time. We got Dak, Dak Prescott now. And so the, the tide just keeps on rolling. Mm-hmm. I didn't throw away the Cowboys just because Tony Romo didn't stay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, Tony Romo made a decision, but – and this was not uh, Jalen Smith's decision. The circumstance is a little bit different, but still, it's the same thing. The Cowboys will always still keep on rolling, and we we got we want the victories regardless of how we feel about Jalen Smith. No doubt, man. So, how did you feel when uh, Demarcus Ware lifted that Lombardi Trophy up in in Denverland? How did you feel about that one? Man, I tell you what, I was so proud of him. Mm-hmm. I, I love Demarcus Ware. Uh, he is a class act on the field and off the field. And I was proud of him. I wish he could have done it in a Dallas Cowboys uniform, but I was proud of him. No doubt. So it's the same situation. It's just a business decision. A lot of people a lot of people were angry and upset when he left, but some people were pretty much cheering and celebratory because it was like, hey, man, he's always hurt his neck. He's just never been to, he's the shell of himself. And that's just how it happened. That, that That's just the the way that the Cowboys have been operating. It's hard, man. It is. It's hard. But I appreciate you for calling in. Uh, Thank, from you, the 918. Thank you, Thank mm-hmm. you. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that Jalen Smith is a DeMarcus Ware type of impact or he'll go to a team and have the impact like DeMarcus Ware. I'm not saying that one. But we got the 804. You're live. Hello? Talk to me. Hey, Law, I think Ron wanted to push the button on Jalen, man. He should have he kept that 54 on. <laughs> oh, my he kept, He should have never got that nine, man. Put too, much, too, put too many eyes on him, bro. <laughs> but, but the thing is, <laughs> but the thing is, for real, though, uh, I understand it was a business move, but mm-hmm. I wish they would have done it um, during the spring or something like that. Yeah. Because I, I know the brother was trying to prove himself that he belongs there, but I get it. It's all it's all business. Yeah, it could have been like it. this. This this is what could have happened, and we can only speculate from here. It could have been the fact that Jerry said, hey, Dan, is this guy your guy? And Dan was like, nah, man, I, I really can't use him. But Jerry could have been like, hey, give me four games. Give me four games with him, and let's see if he can change your mind. You think that could have happened? I, I, I can roll with that. Yeah, yeah. It could I they can business roll with partners, that. You know, that's just what it is. Yeah, because I give it to Dan Quinn. He done, made, he, he done done what he had to do, so Jerry going to listen to him. Right. But I, I know Jerry probably tried to fight for him a little bit, but overall the man said, I can't use him. I can't use him. He going to go with his guys. I, I believe that would happen. Right. And, and, and it could be that Jerry got a knock at the door and Jalen Smith walked into that office and said, hey, I'm not getting playing time, man. I, I love the Cowboy, love this organization, but I got to get on the field. He probably went straight to Jerry, and Jerry probably worked out something with Dan, and they, they just probably said, you know what? It's better for you to just test the market right now. And nobody bid on the bait for the trade because they tried to trade. It was not like they didn't, and nobody bit, and they just let him go. I, I just wish we could have got some form from the trade, yep. like, the, like the Panthers did. But yeah. I understand. I mean, they could, I, I would wonder could they package dealing with somebody else to get some. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess it is what it is. Hey, what, what they say is, as soon as you, as soon as you buy the car and you drive it off the lot, the price go down. Don't bump into anything. <laughs> because once exactly. you bump into anything, exactly. it, it don't matter what kind of car it is. The value gone. It's gone. Nobody want to buy or use broke car. But I appreciate you, man. All right, Cowboys for life. Take it easy. Cowboy up. Yeah, appreciate you, man. All right. Uh, all right, man. We got somebody. We got a lot of people. Boy, y'all, y'all call in real good. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. All right, so let's see if I can get this next caller in right quick. Boy, uh, where did where does this number went to? Oh, here you go. Way down at the bottom, Henry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Henry. You live, nine three six. You live. What's up, man? What's up, man? Talk talk to me. Oh, man, you know, let me tell you about old Jalen, man. Jalen, I bet you, in all of God, what God loves, he's going to go somewhere, he's going to win a Super Bowl. Just like you, you just talking about how the Marvels were, raised up that, that Super Bowl trophy, is what he could do. Because it happens, it happens every time you got to trade one day players. You know, Jalen, Jalen wasn't no bad player to me, man. I, I wish they would have kept him. See, it's true. He wasn't no bad player to me. You know, he just slowed down a little bit. Yeah, he, you know, she. Cause you get older, you, know, you get older. Once you start playing football, your bones don't don't move like they used to. So, I, what I'm trying to say, they should have kept him until after after the football season. The trade call they made it look like he really just was an uh, impact. But I know he was the impact. I'm, I'm looking at the games every Sunday. I've been looking at him ever since he they drafted him. So, yeah, but you know how it is, this business, man. And and if the Cowboys, Dan no. Quinn, couldn't figure out a way to utilize him and put him in the right spot, then it's time for him to go. And yeah. unfortunately, that is the price that the Cowboys are going to have to pay if he go to a Super Bowl contender. You know, it took that DeMarcus Ware went to a Super Bowl contender. I don't think that he would have a Lombardi ring or a trophy if he right. didn't go to a contender. Right. You know, he, he would have been sitting there still looking. You know, but what we've seen the storyline before, I think Chris Canty, uh, 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 as well as all of those boys that went to the <laughs> to the doggone Kansas City Chiefs, they got multiple Super Bowl. Well, they got uh, a Super Bowl uh, with the Kansas City oh, Chiefs, been to the Super Bowl Hitchens. multiple times. Yeah, and Anthony Hitchens, uh, and I think the other guy uh, that played linebacker for us. So it is what it is, you know. Shout out to those guys, yep. by the way. Yep. But appreciate you for calling oh, in. Shout out to them, man. Appreciate him. DC4L, man. All day. I love it. All right, so we're going to try to roll through this. Remember, I got my clock timer to remind me uh, when 20 minutes hit. I got to roll this thing up. So, uh, 805, you're live. Oh, oh, oh Law Nation, man. Uh, Talk to me. I'm happy to be calling in, man. Thanks for taking my call. Um, first off, man, I wrote down four things, you mm-hmm. know, when it comes to Jalen Smith. And uh, I watched – Cowboys ridiculously, man, ex-football player here. And uh, it's funny, my brothers and everybody who watches football with me, they, I just kept calling it, you know, you're watching the film, you're watching tape, and the number one thing a linebacker's got to do is fill a gap. you got to mm-hmm. fill your gap. Right. Jalen could not do it. He could not do it. Mm-hmm. He could, And the second thing is he couldn't shed a block. Mm-hmm. Can't be a linebacker if you can't shed a block. Right. Number three, Place keeper, you know we got too many guys on the roster who who deserve that spot. Jabril Cox, you know Neil. I mean, it, LVE is okay. He's manageable, but you know. I mean, you're you right. Know, you 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 you're right on the money, man, yeah. with your assessment there. Yeah. Uh, especially, I go back. I always like to use movie reference. You remember the movie Three Hundred, right? Oh yeah. You yeah. remember that little that little dude that wanted to be a Spartan warrior? And uh, Leonidas, yeah. he, he gave him an opportunity to speak to yeah. him, but he said, hey, can you lift your shield? You know, and mm-hmm. and he couldn't. Mm-hmm. He, he couldn't lift his shield. And he said, you can still be helpful to the team. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. we need everybody because the way we pursue, we Spartan, you know what I'm saying? And he lifted his, his yep. shield and did everything. And. He was he was impediment to the to, to the organization at that time, basically. Yeah. But he felt yeah. better, he felt salty, and he went to the opposition. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. Jalen is that type of guy, but like you said, what the film shows is that he took certain things the wrong way when it's time to fill gaps. 
when it's time for a certain assignment. Yep. Now, he did play with effort. He did play with all of the encouragement that you can only imagine. He probably motivated everybody, but he couldn't lift his shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, if, and for me, I did not want him gone. I love Jalen Smith. Right. My son, you know, he got he got a Jalen Smith jersey, and it's going to be sad when I tell him today when I pick up from school that Jalen ain't on the team no more. I got to let him know that. But ultimately, the only reason why I could think that the Dallas Cowboys would release Jalen Smith is kind of like what the other guy you said earlier in the call. Maybe he went to, you know, to management, went to, you know, went to Jerry Jones. He said something, and boom, right there, it's like, dude, you're going to be an issue in this locker room. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and he's not the type of guy you would think would be that. But that's the only reason why I could think they would release a man like that if it wasn't just to – you know, open up another spot on the open roster. And, and that's that's my thing. If you can't fill the gap, you can't shed a block, you can't play linebacker for us. He was going to be the reason why we couldn't make the Super Bowl this year. And now that he's gone, it hurts my heart to say this, but that just put us now, we are now a contender. Without him there, we're a contender now. And that's 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 my piece on that, Law Nation. I appreciate you taking my call, man. Anytime. I appreciate you. This is Sparta! <laughs> I think Leonidas didn't want that guy to leave, man. He didn't. You know, he, he said, hey, oh, I know who you are. You are a son of one of our warriors, you know. <laughs> That's just how it goes, man. 252. Hold on. Hold on right quick. Hold on quick. 252, you live. Hey, what's up, Law? Nothing to it, man. Talk to me. Hey, this TP from NC. I call you from a different number today, but it's, okay. but it's all good. Okay. I see the NC in there. Hey. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> hey, look, man. I, hey, I, I, I'm kind of conflicted a little bit, but I knew it was coming. You right. knew it was coming. You know what I'm saying? Hey. The conference has been locked. Our building coverage. Mm -hmm. You just couldn't move, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just where it is. We're trying to win. We, you know. You got to get the best best players out there on the field. Facts. You know, and now you now you can see you can now you can see what Jabril Cox is, is all about. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of the guys, Donald Wilson, got to get on the on the on the field. So, hey, let the young bucks go do their thing. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I don't feel that good about Vanderich. To be honest with you. Right, you right, know, right, right. So, 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 Vanderish, Vanderish, looking at this thing, saying, "Hey, I got to look. This should be a light all up under his, you know what? Because he got to play through the echoes of the whistle now. Vanderish got to because at the end of the day, they're not going to renew that contract if he don't show up for these remaining games. Appreciate you for calling yeah, in, TP. Though. Appreciate you. I got to get yeah, some more callers in here. Appreciate you. Good call for you though. Yeah, yeah. We we locked the conference call right now, so we're gonna try to make sure we get everybody that's in here that's been waiting. Three oh one, you live. Hey, what's going on, Lord Nation? Talk to me. This guy's been a liability for some time now, but my concern isn't really Jalen Smith. My concern is next year. What are we gonna do when? Our coaches, like offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, start getting these head coaching jobs. Look, that's what I'm looking at. I mean. They should get offers because of the way we plan if they can continue to play this way, this rate of, of, of uh, I guess, level of competition. You know, everybody going to try to really look at this offensive coordinator. They're going to try to look at this defensive coordinator because their job will be to become a defensive – well, to be a head coach, I guess. But here's the situation. We can't count those until we get there. They're going to have to still evaluate the players that's on the field now. They can't look that far ahead. I mean, I hear you. I guess, I guess you're right. I thank you for taking my call, man. I'm from Washington, D.C. And D.C. stands for Dallas Cowboys all day long. Yes, indeed. Let's go. That D.C. stands for Dallas Cowboys. I appreciate that over there in Washington. Let's go. Not the District of Columbia. Yeah, let's go. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> Not the District of Columbus, I meant to say. All right, so uh, the 409, uh, what's on your mind? What's up, Law? None to it. Talk to me. Oh, man, first of all, I want to thank you for last night, man. It was classic. <laughs> last night <laughs> right. was a classic show. Yeah. <laughs> it was classic. The birds and all. Yeah. Classic, man. First are of we, all, neither one of us are coaches, right? Right. Neither one of us are coaches. But if you're watching the film, 
Julian is to line up the defense. He can't line up a defense if he don't know what it's supposed to be. You know, or he's not able to fill his gaps. They following him. If he can't lead, the team ain't going to lead. You know, the team can't follow if he can't lead. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just being out there. He tried his best. But I think time just caught up with him. And I know if I was a coach or a general manager, if I can get a lesser person to do what he's doing, I got to go their route. Mm-hmm. It's just, it just plain and simple. Yeah. You know, but I just had to call in by last night, man. <laughs> I stayed online for two hours. Appreciate I didn't get to talk to you last night. Oh, my God. But that was a classic show, man. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. You've been holding on to everlasting. So what I'm going to do is yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. When, when it get like that, because I had, man, that line was longer than Shaq feet. I'm going to start locking the uh, conference call. You know, I'm going to let people fill in, and then I'm going to say, hey, yeah. we're going to lock it. And those who are in here, we're going to get to every last one of them. It's like I'm doing now. going like – you keep it going like that, though, man. I'm telling you, man. Y'all, you gonna be something else, man. I appreciate you so much, man. But are we? Are we? Are we? All right, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, six one five. You live. All right, here you go. Six one five. I clicked the wrong button. You live now. Uh, in my life? Yeah, you're live like 95. Talk to me. <laughs> What's up, Law? This is Natasha. How y'all doing? Great. Good, good. Okay, so uh, I think, um, you know, a lot of us are, of course, you know, a lot of the fans are devastated, and some are like, yeah, that's, that's what we've been waiting on, but Mm -hmm. I think as far as, you know, Jalen, we've been, you know, just following the pattern. Mm -hmm. We do have a pattern. I think a lot of teams have their own pattern. Dallas have their kind of. So, uh, for example, you remember when Taco, when you let him go? Right. uh, When did Quinn come? Did Quinn come after Taco? I know he was suspended, Mm. and then we activated him. So, uh, it's some people I feel like. We we've been doing it. it's a pattern uh, like you talked about dead, mm-hmm. um, and so we we can't be shocked you know in that aspect, and also I think a lot of people just invested in his story you know his mm-hmm. story you know about him you know rehabbing people invested of course you know you buy a jersey you you know a ticket and so you just you just fell in love with the kid and you know for the first year or two he was on top but we saw him decline and now here we are. You know, we are here now, but um, I think uh, now we just, a lot of us ask for a change, and we got it. So now this is what, this is what we, we are, we are here, all right? So we're asking, hey, uh, Jason Garrett, can we go for it on two? Can we, can we get those fourths, you know, fourths and twos or fourths and threes? Mm-hmm. We're doing that now. Right. So is that Queen? Are we, we getting what we're asking for? And so now we just got to think about they ask for these things. The the change is not, you know, is uncomfortable. But I think the the best decision, what what the you know the, what they're making is the key to what they feel like the recipe to get into a Super Bowl. Let's go. Yes, indeed, Natasha, you're right on the money with it, and and I really appreciate all the work you do for this channel and. Uh, and you, you got to tell people to go find your podcast too, because I know that they they ready to hear your voice on that one. You tell everybody what your name of your podcast. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's called uh, Number Thirty Three Sports Podcast. I'm on Spotify. Uh, I'm everywhere where uh, you can listen to a podcast. Um, so it's Number Thirty Three Sports Podcast. And soon I'll be having the, my YouTube up really soon. But I appreciate that, Law. Yeah, anytime, and and people. Pay attention. Just because we got rid of a player, it could be a blessing in disguise because Jabril Cox, y'all look out for him, you know. And, and of course, Keanu Neal, he, he is a bridge guy. They didn't sign Keanu Neal for, like, a three-year contract. Natasha, they, they only signed him for a one-year contract, right? One year. That's what I'm thinking. I don't yeah. think it's longer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so – yeah. You got to get your guys in acclimated, the guys that you drafted, so that they can have a good time and, and understand that, hey, this is the defense, this is where we're heading to, and we can't hold on to old, you know, if they're not buying in <laughs> to the system. But I appreciate you right. so much, Natasha. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right. That's a good call from Natasha. All right. 
Well, we 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 rolling, we rolling. We got the seven oh six. You in the mix? What's going on, though? Nothing too. I wasn't too happy with, but. I go back to what Jerry said in uh training camp about burning the wagon. Mm-hmm. And for firewood and Mississippi, he said some of you gonna die, there's gonna be some new faces born. Mm-hmm. So we we going to California. <laughs> you know, you know, we we just have to adapt with it, you know. Mm-hmm. But um I, I think I think Jalen might get another one that's over there. But I hope, you know, if if it's one of them things where he need to go and retire. Go ahead and retire with the money and go on in the broadcast. He, he still got that cowboy allure on him. Right. He ain't hurt for no money. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's <laughs> going to be a situation. It's going to be a situation where it's we, the Cowboys. We give him longitude and latitude because he played for the Cowboys. But if he played for another team, they probably going to gonna give him the, the hard treatment. You know, there ain't going to be no fluff fluff around here. Right. Appreciate right. you, man. That's all I want. Thank you. All right. Are you rolling through? We rolling through. Eight, three, two. What you got? Uh, hello. You're live. Hey. All right, brother. First of all, you do a fantastic job with what you've done and what you do with your content. Thank I'm you, Doctor C, out of Houston, Texas. Been a cowboy fan all my life. Here's the thing, real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, we got to be careful of not falling prey to who we like emotionally. Mm-hmm. and not practically practically for what they can do on the football field. Mm-hmm. And I see that as fans. We get emotionally tied to people. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean that they're producing. Facts. So this is a good move. There's nothing against you. Ain't got nothing to do with that. It could be Emmett, I mean, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Right. Look, it's about production. Mm-hmm. Make moves. The next thing I'm going to say, finally the Cowboys is getting back to winning championship football. And I'm not just saying on the front field, but what's happening in the front office. You got to do things right in the front office. Then you got to follow suit on what the product is on the field. So Thanks. I get it. You, uh, Dallas Cowboy fans, we're emotional. But when it gets to the football field, it's like your parents saying, you want to go get to this uh, roller skate ring, but we're going to Disney World next week. So mm-hmm. I'm going to be okay with you crying with this roller skating, but you don't know. You're going to be smiling when we get to Disney World. So, hey, Ooh, good, I just good analogy. let you know. Uh, love Cowboy Nation. We're doing great, but we got finally we making decisions like a championship football team. We cannot hold on to liability. It's no doubt. About assets on. Hey, hey, Doc, Doc, you you said you are you a doctor of medicine or are you a doctor of, of like philosophy? What 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 what, what uh, doctor <laughs> are you? What type of doctor? Yeah, I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. I'm a Christian psychologist. Psychology. So, 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 so you're the doctor of the mind, you know, the, the metaphysics and all of that stuff, right? Precisely. Right, right. So, so your your job is to, is is to actually tell the truth when you when you got that person sitting in the chair, what have you, or you had that one on one consult with them, you can't sit there and tell them like, hey, you know. This is what's going to happen. You know, you got to give them the tangible truth. And regardless of what it is uh, from a, a profession that you are in, you, you just have to tell them the truth. So that is what the Cowboy Nation need to hear. And that's what people need to hear when they talking to you, because that's why you get their business or that's why you do business to help people out. Right. Precisely. Mm-hmm. Appreciate Precisely, you so much. Appreciate. Yes, sir. Man to help out as much as I can. Go Cowboys. Keep doing a great job, brother. Thank you. That's a good call from Dr. C. All right, we got the 915. You're live. Hey, what's up, Law? You're listening to nothing but the best, brother. What's uh, appreciate up? Appreciate you. Chris, man. Shout out to you, Chris. Let me, let me uh, update your name on here, man. Let me put your name in here so I can know next time you call in. Yeah, yeah. But what you got for this episode? For sure, man. I, like you said, man, this is a blessing in disguise. Um, I, I feel like Jabril Cox is going to be the guy for the next three years. It's going to be Michael Parsons and Jabril Cox flying around. And you'll see on, on TV saying that this front seven is insane, you know. But we need that bridge guy, like you said, Keanu Neal. So I, I don't think we'll keep him more than two years, but I feel like Jabril Cox is going to fly around, cover tight ends. Uh, he's that long, long guy that – Dan Quinn wants so that's Dan Quinn's guy so right. we'll see what happens with him no doubt sure you're right on the money with that yes, Chris sir. yeah yes sir appreciate you man that's a good call from Chris yeah no problem 
Yeah. And last but not least, I got the man with the plan. Computer, what's good with you? Computer love. <laughs> Computer, you're live. Computer. I hear you tapping on something, computer. Come on, man. You're live. <laughs> you must unmute yourself, man. Unmute yourself, computer. I'm trying to get him. More than one way to scan the cat. Let's see if we can get it this way. Let's see. Computer. Once, twice, three times. Let's see. Computer. You got me now? Man, uh, you, you got to call into the hotline number, man. <laughs> I did. I called in the hotline number and it said, uh, I did. I'll do it again. All right, All right hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. All participants are unmuted. I'm, I'm, I'm on hold on the, on the. All right, hold on. Let me kick you out of here. I call back because <laughs> the brother will call me all day. All participants are unmuted. All participants are muted. So I get on by out of here. <laughs> Somebody said no computer. <laughs> oh my goodness, Cowboy Nation! Come on, call in, dog. The conference has been unlocked. Come on now. Let's see, call now. Here we go. Here we go. One way or another, baby. One way or another. You in there now. Get in there. <laughs> I'm in there like Slim. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Uh, nothing to it, man. I Do saw. I saw you saw. Man. I saw you with uh Paul. With all those doggone cars, man. I said, good Lord. Tell Paul, hey, man, can you just let's loan me one of those, uh, what, what's it, a Lambo or something? Yeah, he got them Lambos and he got them Corvettes. Corvettes. And tell yeah, him, let them just get one of them and just slap Law Nation on it just one time, man. I don't even have to drive around the parking lot. I can just be sitting on a car. I can just sit on a car like this. <laughs> I tell you what, that little deal I just got up negotiating for us today. We'll be riding, we'll be riding, riding, riding the SUVs. When they buy us out next year, cause we got so many people <laughs> listening to our stuff. Yeah, I just good got off the phone with them. I'm not even gonna talk about it, cause I don't want nobody to steal our idea. I was so, I was so glad you cut me off the other night, so I didn't tell our business to the world. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't kick it till I got off the phone with them. Long time, so I don't snitch us out. Right, right. But uh, but, but if they, we waiting on uh. But but, but computer man, why why? Let me ask you this though. You told me a couple of days before this happened that you kind of knew that this was gonna happen. Why you didn't tell me though? You know you were talking about Jalen, and then you was like, ah, I ain't gonna tell you. But why you didn't go ahead and tell me, man? You could have leaked that one to me. Yeah, but I didn't really know. I just got came and I got an inside touch, and I right. just didn't didn't know if they was telling me they were just trying to throw me off with something else. But uh, his attitude changed. Jada Smith getting cut didn't have nothing to do with his attitude change. Jerry and him went to him and Steven and went to him and tried to get him to renegotiate his deal and to work with us, and he said no. Mm -hmm. After we the only team that drafted him, that had faith in him, to give him his opportunity to play in the league, and he turned around and stabbed us in the back like this. Mm -hmm. We can't have no – we don't need no more selfish players on that team. We mm -hmm. don't need no more of that – him jumping on him jumping on that pile, he could have hurt somebody else's neck. And got one of our other players hurt. Or oh, he could have hurt one of the opposing team players jumping on top of that pile. It, it got to the point that it was all about him and not about the team. Like him swiping. Like I called you the other day and told you about him posting his own highlights on his Instagram channel. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Don't do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We don't, you know, it's, we try to build a winning atmosphere down there. We don't need no selfishness. So now it gets everybody's attention. Like, hey, are you. Round, your ass got to go. 
Mm. You know, and what and then what what made me more upset than anything is Stephon Gilmore going to Carolina for a seven round pick in twenty twenty three. <laughs> Wait a minute. What was what what's the language on that, man? Let me see, man. Oh my god. They got him for a seven round pick or a six round pick in twenty twenty three. Yeah, there's ways you can work. Stephon around. Gilmore going to to play. Yeah, I didn't know what was language is on on that uh Yeah, that's see. that's ridiculous. And everybody's been cussing me out all you getting for two, you get it for this. Belichick don't care. Mm-hmm. Well, Belichick get mad at a player, he'll let him go for little or nothing. Mm. And he was mad at Gilmore. Because, you know what, because, because, because he didn't want to, guess what? He, he didn't want to renegotiate his money, too. <laughs> uh-uh. No, nah, but I think I think we could have paid him. I think he would have came. But what I found out from an inside guy is that his next-door neighbor where he lives is the general manager for Carolina. He lives in that city where the Carolina Panthers are. Right. So that was already been talked about. So that should be a tampering. That should be some tampering should be filed against that. But they ain't going to do the beginning of the whole thing. So I'd have paid that to get him to come play for the Cowboys. I just don't yeah. So, so, so his base right now is a $5 million. So uh, all Carolina Panthers had to pay for this year is a $5 million contract. And then at the end of this year, uh, they can uh, renegotiate if they want to keep him for a longer extent. Uh, his roster bonus due three hundred and twenty three thousand. So yeah, you're right. I think the Cowboys could find five million dollars somewhere under the corporate, you know, for that for that trade and, and get rid of uh, some guys as relates to like it's, it's on the low end, low end of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. see, like, but like, uh, but he wanted to go to, but you know, he he got a home there. Yeah, that's where his family is. At. Yeah, that's yeah. Where he wanted to live. So that's probably why he went to Carolina. You know, yeah, they had the inside track on that. And then my, how did that smoke come? And then my whole thing is, if, if, uh, if they're gonna be like that, I mean, it's just like Texas, man. It's just like Texas, man. I love Texas. And I love Dallas. But man, we got to be a lot more friendly to people. So players will want to come to Dallas and play. Want to move their families down there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that, it's hurting us. You know what I'm saying? And all the negativity of the fans and everybody and all this, that that goes in. in p- players look at that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When they want to come to another team and play, you know they they look at you know they look how the media treat the players and how people turn on folks and stuff like that. We gotta stop eating our own in Dallas. Yeah, you know we what I'm do. Saying? It's like them right now, like saying the only handicap on our team is our head coach. I remember when Mike McCarthy was kicking our butt with Aaron Rodgers and calling all them, you know, the, the no catch flag, how smart he was. But then he come to Dallas, all of a sudden now he's stupid. Come on, man. Mm. Don't do that man like that. Give that man some respect. Like mm. everybody wanted us to hire Urban Meyer instead of uh, Mike McCarthy. Look what Urban Meyer doing. Mm. Everybody wants us to hire the coach that Carolina got instead of uh, Mike McCarthy. And Mike McCarthy beat him. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, I mean – I mean, I hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that boss man fat can turn out to be just like Trayvon Diggs, so it won't hurt so much us not get, getting Gilmore. But man, we could have got Gilmore. God, we could have solidified our defense forever yeah. for a while, mm. along with, um, with, with, you know, along with the safety that we got from the coach, just playing hookers, just playing better. Right. Man, we'd have had three first rounders, basically three first rounders in our secondary, but. Right now, we you know we gotta try to figure this out. You know, hopefully that'll make Anthony Brown play better. You know, did you did you see what Thad Prescott said this morning? Yeah. Uh, what well, now? What did Thad say? Yeah, because I only saw. Uh... He said he talked to Stephon Gilmore a few years ago and yeah, he told him ago. that he wanted to be a cowboy. Yeah, I, I did. I did a film session on uh, on Gilmore, and it was just like right before he uh, left to go from the Bills to the Patriots. And uh, he actually uh, reached out and he said, yeah, I would love to play for the Cowboys. But we hear this all the time. We heard this from the Honey Badger. We heard it from other players, too. But this is how it goes, man. Even uh, Earl Thomas and things like that. It it normally don't happen when when those type of news hit. Uh, But it is what it is, man. I I appreciate you so much. Uh, Jane Slater just said, uh, she just tweeted, uh, Ezekiel Elliott says uh, he learned of the news of Jalen Smith being released just like everyone else via the media 
and he said that suck. Uh, he say uh, they came in together. Uh, Smith has been through a lot, you know, and uh, he says that it, it, he can't say he would let that be a distraction, but got to control what we can control as a team. So either the Cowboys going to rally behind this or they're going to allow this to pull them apart. But this this should. I mean, how would they? How, I mean, I don't understand how you're going to let that pull you apart. It shouldn't pull you apart, but th- this would be the fabrics of the Cowboys' psyche. They should, you know, you know, uh, computer. You know how I look at this. You ever seen a a, a knot in a rope? You know, I'm from the country, mm-hmm. and you know, when you got a knot in the rope, and people pull on each side of the knot. That knot get tighter. The Cowboys mm-hmm. organization, the players should get tighter after this situation. Everybody should look at it and say, "Hey, y'all saw what happened to Jalen. Don't be the next Jalen." Play through the echoes of the whistle. Make sure you know your assignment. Make sure you make the tackles that's necessary. Not saying that Jalen didn't do those things, but we got to make sure that we are on 100%, not 90, not 80, not 70. They should be like that knot in that rope. They should be tighter and pull thing, pull this game through, pull this season through, and win. And see, that's, that's, that's what I don't like about James Slater. I hear her ass up on Twitter and told her to text me and call me because she need a man in her life because she, she, she gets too she, she, she too scatterbrained. Because for her, why she got to go talk to Ezekiel Elliott and ask him them damn questions to try to start some decisions within our team? Bitch, quit looking for a summer. Go somewhere else and start some bullshit. Don't come down here in our, in our house and start that shit like you did last no, year. No, 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 computer. So she can stop covering our team. No, so, you no. Know, all she's doing is like everybody else is. She's trying to get a story to further her career and hurt us at the same time. We ain't got time for that. Oh, my she God. Like she needs to go. Jerry oh. need to tell her, like, look, baby, I don't want you covered. I need no more. <laughs> Find you, get to your, and if, move her ass somewhere else. Man, you, get her you, ass you, out the you, way because we don't need that negative. Nobody never would have brought that up. Z ain't got no business opening up his damn mouth in the first place. Nigga, don't run. I mean, excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I, I get upset. I love the Cowboys. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh-uh. It just that, that that that's that's what gets me. Yeah, man. Oh All my goodness. Outside trying to trying to take us down. You know what I'm saying? I know how you feel about that, man. It's like we need to be like the Corleone family. We do not need none of these outsiders trying to come in. We need we, Jerry need to be more <laughs> like more like Don than like and then like I don't care if he's afraid of because he's not afraid of, but he he. He need to he need to be more like the earlier Don, not the Don that got older that was kind of soft. I want him to go back to being the earlier Don. Yeah. And I need Stephen to be like Michael. And I yeah. need I want Jerry Jr. to be like to be like to be, like, to be not be like Scotty, but be like Vince. So when he get ready to take over, so we can have that newness that we need. You know what I'm saying? Because it just it's so many people that's after us that it's, it's kind of hard. Now we got this distraction. Talking about Zeke. Zeke, you ain't the CEO of the team. Everybody got to tell you nothing. You play on offense. Mmm, man. Hey. Talking about y'all came in together. You know, I'm sure Jay is a good friend and all that, but you know, but see, that, that's, that's the crap I'm talking about. He probably been whining to Zeke about his playing time, all these new players. I'm telling you, man, it was something else going on for him to cut him like that. Yeah. Besides his play. Because he's been playing bad since he got there. Mmm. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, first of all, he didn't want to work with the team and renegotiate. And then he come out through his agent talking about he's not signing with just anybody. He want to play for a contender. Come mm. on, bro. He 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 thinks he, he even after all of this, he still ain't humble. That's his problem. I followed Jalen. Mm. I stood up for him more than anybody did. I talked to him the first couple of years he went to camp. Then after he got to playing good, bro, we ain't talked to him. Act so weird and funny. I'm like, dang, dude, when one nobody stuck in your ass and I was posting it backing you up, you like, hey, computer, what's up? Then you get to playing hot, and all of a sudden you act like you don't know who I am. Mm. You know what I'm saying? His attitude changed. You know? No it, doubt, it, man. You know, don't don't get beside yourself, bro. You Computer, know what I'm saying? man. You know, I, 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 $32 million. Don't, man, don't feel sorry for him. That boy got $32 million that he would not would, would have gotten. If, if, let me tell you something else. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to tell you one last thing I think what really – it pissed me off when he did it, but I was mad at the other players at the time, so I kind of – didn't say nothing. Mm-hmm. When he went in there and backdoored everybody and went in and got their contract before Dak did. And oh. Then he went in and said, I don't know who those people, representatives are. They should be trying to, you know, when he talked about Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff the Paul Juice had to deal with some of them rappers that we had to fire. You know mm. what I'm saying? They want to talk out the side of their mouth and make these little slick comments, but then they want to act like they love the team. No, you don't love the team. Keep your mouth closed about the CEO. Don't run your mouth. Keep it closed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't throw your other team. He threw his other teammates on the bus when he did that. He threw Dak on the bus. No doubt, People man. forgot about that. I don't know who they represented. The conference has been locked. When he went in and did that backdoor deal, when they were trying to negotiate with that, and when Zeke got his deal, and he went in and slipping in and said, hey, I found a deal. All right, computer, I got to roll, man. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to get off at two, man. Hey, I'm supposed to get off at two, okay. man. But, hey, I got to roll. got to bounce like a basketball. Huh? See y'all later. Appreciate, Appreciate you, man. Good call. Always, man, my dog computer, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, conspiracy computer, man. He, he always going he to bring some good stuff, though, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And. He would send you. He would send you pictures of him and John, Steve, and Jones talking together, uh, uh, drinking some Johnny Walker Blue. By the way, so I he ain't lying to kick it for those who thinking they like our oh, computer be <laughs> no computer be with them. We be with them. I just hope all is well. Shout out to Miss Jackie for sending me that information of what uh, Jane Slater was said uh, as far as that interview uh, with. Um, Ezekiel Elliott. I don't know when the audio will be produced, but uh, I got to give my guy. I, I, I know I'm supposed to to leave. Got to bounce, but you got one minute because I know he's he's a heavy supporter of the channel on all platforms. He's on uh, Patreon, Facebook, as well as my uh, YouTube. Let me let my guy from the nine ten Marvin man. Uh, you got one minute, Marvin. Talk to me, man. You the last caller. Yeah, of the I got day. you. What's going on, Law? None to it, yeah, man. What's going on, Law? Uh, I just want to. I'm gonna be short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know everybody's heartbroken over Jalen Smith being released. I was shocked last night. I'm hurt, too. Mm -hmm. But I also have to go back to what Big Game James said years ago. NFL is a business. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't fall in love with a player. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may like a player, but fall in love with them because they could be here today, go on the next. And it is what it is. But I was calling to talk about possible replacements for Jalen Smith. It would not surprise me if they brought in another linebacker because – with what we got now, you got Luke Gifford um, as a backup. You also have Jabril Cox. I really don't feel Jabril Cox is ready to step into that linebacker role yet, but he may have no choice but to step into that role with the departure of Jalen Smith. Or it would surprise me if Kamara was moved to linebacker. Mm, that's a good observation there, Marvin, uh, especially uh, from the thing that you just said. I got a phone call that just hit me right in right now. Uh, hold on. Okay. Quick. Hey, Barry. Hey, how you doing, young fella? Doing great. I'm going to call you right back in about four or five yeah, minutes. You got it. You got it. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yeah. Hey, all right. All right. Y'all have Yo. a good one, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I got to get this call right here. Um, Got some exciting news. Barry, Cowboys experience. We got something that's in the pipeline that I want all you guys to, to be here. And Dallas at the Toyota Music Factory uh, is in Irving, Texas. We got an exciting player that's going to be there. And I'm working on another player that's going to be there. And we've been going back and forth. And I can't wait for you guys to be there. It's going to be this, this Saturday between 1 and 4 o'clock. At the Toyota Music Factory in Irving, Texas. Des Barry is one of the sponsors. He just called me. We going to talk about this. Tangible players that you guys could come out, enjoy, kick it, get autographs and things like that. And also get some photo ops. It is going to be fantastic, Cowboy Nation. I can't wait to see y'all beautiful faces this weekend. Also, knockouts tomorrow. At Dak Prescott Restaurant, Andrew Breeze, they co-own this restaurant called Knockouts. I want to see y'all beautiful faces there as well. Between we, we, we kick it off at 7, 7.30, but it's going to be in the latter, latter part of the day. It's in the colony, the Knockouts. Um, I'm going to have the uh, address for you guys. Look, I'm talking about the place. Don't have the address on me right quick. <laughs> but uh, the colony, if you are in the Dallas area, the, the DFW, Type in D Colony Knockouts. We will be there. Me, Boss Cowboy, DOC. We will phone in Big Game James. And I'm telling you guys, 
It's free 99, Silent DC. If not, man, I got you. Don't worry about the cost. You know, you got the law over here. Just say, hey, hey, I'm, I'm with law. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm with law. You know, that's how you're going to do that thing. Now, as far as the, uh, the event Saturday, the event Saturday, uh, you know, there, there is some remuneration for that to, to get in the lines, to get the autographs and stuff like that. But uh, I encourage you guys to go to the, the Dallas Cowboys no, CowboysExperience.com. Go to CowboysExperience.com and, and register. Register. And that's how you get all your tickets for the game. That's how you get the VIP field access. That's how you get all of the Middle Light Club uh, supports. And that's how you get everything, Cowboy Nation. So, Law Nation, yeah, I'm virtual, but I'm also physical in the area. So, I want you guys to come on out, enjoy, your, enjoy yourselves, Take some good photos with the players, you know, dance with the pretty ladies and all that stuff. And just like somebody say, wear your dog on mask. And Jason, yeah, 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 yeah. Wear your mask, what have you. But, 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 you know, this Texas open state and all this stuff. So, hey, come on out. Don't meet me there. Beat me there. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. That's all the time that I have for this moment. I really appreciate you guys. Be sure to hit that like button, share this content, and tell a friend or a neighbor or foe where to go when they want to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk and Beyond. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to say this again, Jalen, hope all is well. Stephon Gilmore, I hope all is well. You, you done already, you done already on the team that we done beat, right? You dodged a bullet because we're going to come for you if you was on the Patriots too. But now that you're on the Panthers, I think that you got to play against those filthy Eagles. I can't wait. I want you to take an INT. I want you to do some crazy things over there this weekend, right? If, if you plan this weekend. But... Neither here nor there. Go Panthers this weekend, right? Because y'all play against a team that's in our division, right? So keep pounding. Keep pounding, right? Keep pounding. <laughs> right, right, right. I hope that Panther recover because, boy, we scalped that Panther the, the last week, right? But I come here to tell you guys, write this down. I say it on all of my closing or I try to get there. You know how it goes, Cowboy Nation. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it, and it makes you hold all other things tardy and cheap for it, if life itself seems empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it, and lose, all terror of God or man for it. If you were simply, oh, just simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength, and scargacity, with faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity. If neither cold, poverty, or famish, or fame, or sickness of body or brain can turn you away from the thing you want, if dogged and grim and besieged and beset it with the help of Almighty Cowboy Nation, guess what? Or even the Panthers this weekend, you will. Get it. It's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Tell me up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on. Yeah. I won't miss it's time, time to roll credits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, nation. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Come on. Nowadays, nothing hey. really is ice. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's ice. I got wifey you on blinging sheets. Ice. Freeze. 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 Photo. Photo. Please. Please. No photos. No, no. Jeez. Jeez. No, no. No. Please. No photos. Hit the door and the door man just Let us whole team here. Might need some. Still young, but I move like a Veteran. new deal to my lawyer. To Send it in. If you're down in my management, I'm just warming up a way to lie. Old producer saw the numbers one. Settlements. Different colors in my baggy life. Chalk it up. Talk of the town where you're talking up. Wanna get you a ring and you tough enough. Wanna get you new things with your pockets dull. Run it up. I used to be quiet and out of luck. Now I move up and move humble cuz. The hate and the jealousy. My mama telling me count up your blessings and run it up. Nowadays, nothing really is ice. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell them it's ice. I got that was easy. Ice, freeze, freeze, photo, photo, please, please. no photos. No, no, G's, no, 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 please, no photos. I keep oh. giving game away. I put game on lay away. I got paid to play today. I get paid to stay away. I get paid on rainy days. I might. I ran up a check. I might do no it doubt. again. Enemies close have me thinking they're friends. If you watched it all the way to this point and you have not end. subscribed. Outside the city, I don't feel sick in my ass. Took so many Shame. years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up. Bankroll, bankroll. Euro, euro. Peso, peso. Add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me. If you are not is on me. Oh, you matter what? Add it up, a member of this channel. If your birthday this month, happy birthday to you. Appreciate you, kid. All the haters, stop with your door. Do me a huge favor. Watch your lead forward. Just a little bit. You only climb me, I put the ladders up. No fault. I done doubled Step up God, on the workload I think I fell in love with the bankroll Pray Big up, God. get money, then we lay low Then we lay low Add it up, add it up Bankroll, euro, peso Add it up, add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Oh, you matter what? Add it up, add it up Bankroll, euro, peso Add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Oh, you matter what? He needs some milk! It's all me, everything is on me, gon' back it up Matter what? Told you I'ma do me, why you hatin' on me? It's not adding up Yeah, yeah. shout out to you, Killer Killer K in the house on me, gon' back it up Matter hey. what? Told you I'ma do me, why you hatin' on me? It's not adding up Appreciate your peak, Prescott Shout out to Dak Prescott as well Let's go We out Be sure to catch the round table tonight. Me, Botch Lombardi, Koye puts the K, and I believe Skywalker. I believe. It could be off a little bit. Let's roll.